All right, what's going down, Office Photographers? Today we're talking about how to get to the photo. We're in a beautiful scene here. A uh, nice, big, bright sun coming down. Lots of landscapes. And we're going to get started here. So the first thing I like to do when it comes to taking a photo in landscape is figure out what f-stop I want to use. Uh, because I want a lot of the photo in focus, I'm going to be using an f-stop of f8. Now remember, an f8 will get a lot of the fo photo in focus. A lower aperture of f2 would be just a little bit of the photo in focus. and that's how that kind of works. The next thing I like to choose is my ISO. I always keep it as low as I can go, so we're putting it to 100. And now the last setting is shutter speed. So I'm gonna look through my camera right now, and right now it's saying if I want my exposure to be proper, I have to have a shutter speed of 500. So I'm gonna take that photo right now. And this exposure looks great. So now I'm good to start taking some creative photos. So right now we're in a pretty big open scene right now. And when it comes to telling stories and with landscapes, you kind of just have to move around and explore the entire place. So that's where we're going to be right now. There's some nice leading lines up this hill. So if I get nice and low and kind of use that as the, the main thing of this photo, I'm going to take that photo right there. So what I like about this photo is that the line kind of starts in the middle of the photo and then it kind of moves slightly to the right. So it's following the rule of thirds. If you really want to follow the rule of thirds in another way, you can just simply go to the right. You can have the line in the left of the photo, and then the other part of the line ends in the right of the photo. So you're kind of using the full frame to tell that story. Cool, now another cool subject that we have is this scene over here. Now again, I'm always looking for leading lines as a photographer. You always want, kind of want to find that. And if I take a photo right here, there's kind of a tree in the middle and kind of a little scene here. It's not the best location in the world, but you kind of have to make it work with what, what you have, right? So, um, taking this, I'm going to take the photo. I'm framing the trees at the very bottom of the frame. And a lot of the sky is in this, in this composition. But then if I switch it up, I can shoot through um, these branches that are right in front of me and get a totally different feel of the photo. Now you kind of feel like you're in the scene and now uh, two thirds of the photo is actually the field and a third of the photo is the sky. So there we just took two very different photos, very different fields. And when you're out taking photos, it's kind of fun to have a versatile lens that can shoot at 70 or 24. That's what we're shooting on today with a D750. And it's a great option. Um, we'll take one last photo up here and then we'll bring them into Lightroom and show you how we edit them. All right, the last photo I'm going to take is one of uh, Nigel here. Whenever you're taking portrait photo, you want to make sure your background of the portrait is what you want it to be. So right now, I'm looking at these bushes in the background that will be the, the, the bokeh of Nigel. So I'm going to go to my lowest aperture, which is f2.8 on this lens. Uh, the best focal length for portraits on a zoom lens is 70, because you want that compression. The more you're zoomed in, the more closer the background's going to be to your subject. Um, so for example, if I shot at 24 and went up really close to him, it's gonna look warped, it's not gonna look that good. Versus if I zoomed in and walked back, now it's gonna look a lot better. It's gonna have better compression. Uh, it's gonna be, looks like better bokeh. So those, that's the difference there, you can really tell. And uh, I don't really like that background, so I'm actually gonna have a stand right here. See, now there's a consistent background behind uh, Mr. Wilson here. And uh, he's smiling, he's ready, he's loving it. You can see if I take this photo, there's a little bit of the sky on the top of the frame. All you have to do that is get a shorter subject, uh, one that's not taller than you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, we're just gonna bring these photos into Lightroom. We're gonna show you how we use the Own Your Look Lightroom preset system to craft any look for these photos and keep a consistent photo shoot. So let's get started. All right, so now we are in Lightroom. So I picked out the photos that we took on this photo shoot. And we're gonna start going through the Own Your Look Lightroom preset pack and how I edit these photos. So the first thing I like to do is white balance. So I like to click auto white balance to see what it pulls off. And right now I didn't really do that much. So I'm gonna choose the more warm, uh, probably negative three. I like, to, I like my photos to be naturally a little more warm. So we're gonna do negative three because it starts up cooler, but then uh, we'll make it warmer in the other settings. Now we're gonna go through our tones. So. Auto tone is a good way to start to see what everything looks like. But then we're going to go through each options. T1 looks kind of muted. This looks a little more contrasty, more punch, a lot more contrast in that one. Kind of like the sky in this one. This one's more washed out. I'm probably going to go with two T6 because there wasn't a huge difference. Um, you know what? Actually, 
T2.9 was the coolest one. So we're going to go with that. Um, I'm going to bring up the brightness a little bit and just bring down the highlights. So that's a pretty good exposure so far. Now we're going to go to the simple tones and go through that. Um, sim number one, simple, that's already looking good. Continue. So if you guys don't know what's happening right now, I'm choosing the custom S curve. And if you look here on the right, it's going to change the settings in this part, uh, the tone curve. So we're just picking out our favorite option. Oh, that one's too much contrast. Now some of these look better for different situations. Cool, yeah, we'll stick with simple. Now we're gonna take a look at the more creative S curves just to see if there's any that we like. Um, because it's a landscape photo, uh, we'll have more opportunities to use the creative color S curves because there's no skin tones or people in these photos. Um, I'm gonna go with number five for now because I like it. Now there's a ton of options. So I'm gonna quickly go through all of them and not talk and then you can see my favorite one. Cool, so we found our favorite S-curve now. So this is kind of more looking like a more moody photo, a little more toned back, nothing too crazy. Um, I actually kind of want more saturation so I'm just gonna bring up the saturation just a tad. Uh, next, what we're going to do is mess around with our HSL and our saturation and luminance. So these are options here. So right now it's reset. Now the options should change. So we're going to click our calm yellow. Now everything's kind of muted. That looks good. The greens. Ooh, this looks really cool. It's kind of more a hipster travel look. Uh, we'll likely come back to the greens to get that stylized look. Um, I like the sky in this one. I really like OE. It's a good look. That one's too crazy. Oh, that one's the, the orange and teal look is always a classic go-to. Um, you get the beautiful orange and teal with the skies and the, the shadows being orange. I'm gonna go with the 06 because the skies look natural, but you still get that kind of cool muted greens and nothing's too dramatic. I think this photo would look good with some grains. So I'm gonna add a little bit of subtle grain. Um, we're gonna do some lens correction. We're gonna level it off. Let's see what the split toning can do. So now we're going to go over our split toning. And uh, we're going to look through the options we have here. So I'm going to click that one. So that kind of added like some, uh, some grays and blues into the shadows and highlights. And then we'll check out some color calibration differences, which I sh probably should have started with. But. There's some cool creative options in here, but we're not gonna add any camera calibration. Cool, so we just edited this photo completely. Here's the before, and here's the after without even messing around or having to learn anything in Lightroom. So that was pretty cool. Now we can go and we can kind of tweak this a little bit more to my liking, uh, even though it's already pretty awesome. I'll add some more clarity, uh, add some more contrast in there. Um, warm it up a little bit. the blacks and yeah so now to add a consistent look we're gonna go through each photo and add those settings to each photo so this is how you get a consistent look consistent style awesome guys if you have any questions feel free to ask them below i hope you guys enjoy the little behind the scenes of shooting out in the field just a quick little video of getting to the shot with settings i used and how i edited them if you guys want a free 2018 starter pack feel free to download it below and i'll also include the free preset that i used in this video it'll be called field preset and yeah rock on guys hope you have a great day talk to you soon